going to just um, I'm not, I was going to read out the um, description of the, the participants here because they are all well known and I think you have the leaflets with you but because of that maybe I'll, <laughs> I'll just read parts of it anyway this session this afternoon session is about the bit Miyaga you know ASEAN at 50 really has come a long way and I think it is really built a very good foundation for the vision that we have of a community. Um, and, but in, in, for any uh, activities like this, you know, forming communities, forming, forging agreements, forging uh, uh, blocks, it is important to, usually we, 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 need, we need to establish, we, we need to Uh, we need building blocks, you know, to do this. And among the early initiatives is the BIM Iyaga, the Brun uh, Brunei, Jerusalem, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, East uh, Asian, ASEAN Growth Center. And there are other sub-regions, sub-regional groupings that follow. And the intention is really to build, no? Towards making this community happen. And, and, and so this, this uh, presentation this afternoon, there will be have three speakers. Uh, Mr. Romeo Montenegro is an executive director of MINDA. Uh, Mr. Cesar Achenza, a consultant in Sansar Economic Forum. And Ms. Amina Razul Bernardo is the president of the Philippine Center for Islam and Democracy and Board of Regents of the Mindanao State University. Um, and then we have two discussants, Mr. Datuk Roselan Johar Mohamed, who is the chairman of Bit Iaga Business Council, and Professor Fukunai Kimura, who is the chief economist of Elia and dean of the Keio University. So we have three speakers and two discussants, and we have uh, what, one, one and a half hours to do this. So each uh, present speaker will have maybe around 15 minutes, and probably 10 minutes is for the, for the discussant. So, uh, uh, without further ado, can I can I welcome Mel, as, as according to how it's written here, first Mr. Romeo Montenegro of Minda. Thank you, Dr. Minda. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. The Mindanao Development Authority happens to be the Philippine Coordinating Office for. BAMP Iaga, and uh, I'm not sure if I'm, I'm proud to say that uh, my career in government is as old as BAMP Iaga. Um, when this was launched in um, 1994 at that time, when I first um, had my job um, at the Office of the President of Mindanao, uh, then chaired by um, Paul Dominguez. BAMP Iaga has uh, come a long way, um, of course, with many ups and downs um, because of a number of issues concerns, um, both external and domestic. And when we talk about domestic um, peculiarities that are very unique to Mindanao. That's the reason why when we talk about Mindanao, there is no other office in the Philippines that does the role of integrating um, island-wide efforts than the Mindanao Development Authority. There is no such Luzon Development Authority nor Visayas development authority because of the unique situation of Mindanao. But that uniqueness actually puts Mindanao very much strategically uh, slated in its larger role of um, BIM Iaga in terms of providing the building blocks for ASEAN integration. And as we go by the slides now, this is high time already. Um, for the last 24 years or 23 years since um, BIM Iaga was um, created in this very place uh, in Davao City, there is much already to talk about in terms of where does it intend to move forward and what it has achieved over the years. Of course, uh, let's go back and turn the hand, turn, turn the hands, uh, turn back the hands of time uh, about 23 years ago when uh, this was of course aggressively pursued by no less than then President Fidel B. Ramos, who in 1992 broached the idea with then um, President Suharto, um, Prime Minister Mahathir, and uh, Sultan Bulkiya, that for 
border areas of the four countries to be given that opportunity to accelerate growth. It has to be given that leverage in terms of doing economic interchange across the border. Because the reality is that even before ASEAN integration was even discussed and got into full force in 2015, integration was already happening across these border areas, Western Mindanao with Saba and the other part of, of, of Kalimantan and, and uh, Sarawak um, doing already that integration. So BIP IAGA necessarily provides that logic of showing the building blocks and it is actually what has been, it has been showing through the years. Immediately, um, many of the focus areas within the sub-region can automatically look at a bigger platform, a bigger market for an otherwise very small less economies of scale set up. And, and because of BAMP Iaga, there is now quite a big opportunity for Mindanao to be able to directly, through formal trade, with uh, its um, neighboring um, areas. Rather than the usual route of everything else going through Manila, Manado going to Jakarta, well, the, the very good case of uh, Malaysia is that they are under federal setup. So their federal states of Sabah, Sarawak, and, uh, and Labuan do have much of, of wider latitude of authority to deal. Uh, but the case of, of Mindanao and, and Indonesia, which are heavily central, heavily um, relying on national capital in terms of authority and approval, this is something that gives us opportunity to be able to embrace actual economic interchange across borders without passing through our national capitals. But BAMP IAGA is just one among the many other sub-regional groupings or called back in the late 80s and early 90s as growth triangles. And this essentially was uh, conceived on account of the need to look at complementation of the many resources that are available from among the border areas rather than just looking at it on a national scale. Like for instance, if you look at up, up north, um, the Tumen Delta that that, that was formed to connect North Korea, South Korea, and Japan, um, and China, is that China and North Korea can very well serve uh, the requirements of Japan and South Korea, which at that time uh, are a bit advanced already. So the capital from uh, Japan and South Korea and the technology can very much suit well with the raw materials and labor that are available in China and in North Korea. And so with, for instance, Sijori of Singapore, Indonesia, and Malaysia. Singapore, which is a bit advanced, need to look at opportunities right across the border, particularly in the area of Johor, which is part of Malaysia, and Riau, which is part of Indonesia, to form the Sijori growth triangle. And then later on, in 1993, the Indonesia-Malaysia-Thailand growth triangle was formed to look at the complementation of their resources and economic strength. And a year later, BAP Iaga also came into being in 1994. So this sub-regional cooperation actually uh, is something that validates the concept of corridors approach that is now being put forward. This is, when we talk even about one belt, one road of China, that is exactly a corridor approach to multi, multinational and multi-continent um, um, corridor setup. And this is exactly how we would want to look at development emerging already. Not relying on the national capital, Jakarta, Kuala Lumpur, Manila, for the decisions as to whether or not how we should move forward and do actual economic interchange across the border. But, giving enough opportunity for focus areas far from the national capitals that are sharing common pace of development, lagging behind national capitals, but being given the opportunity now to look at doing actual trading among themselves. And from there, we also saw several other sub-regional cooperations on a larger scale. Uh, of course, one of these, of course, is, is the Central Asia Regional Economic Cooperation, which is very big now. Um, the Greater Mekong uh, Sub-Region, South Asia Sub-Regional Cooperation. But the distinct difference between these bigger sub-regions is that 
this involve entire countries. So we talk about Greater Mekong Subregion or GMS. It's the six countries uh, involved. Um, but when you talk about BAMP Iaga, these are sub-national, sub-regional um, focus areas that do not involve the entire countries. So in terms of comparison, it's not apples to apples, it's apples to mangoes comparison. BAMP Iaga is a mango. But just the same, it provides that mechanism and ability to showcase that integration can start from the bottom and not from the top. Because if you look at ASEAN integration top to bottom, it, it's going to be challenging and difficult to accomplish. But going through the route of bottoms up integration as being demonstrated by the many protocols that were piloted in the Piaga, there is definitely a way forward for ASEAN integration. Fifth freedom traffic rights piloted in BPIAGA even before it was adopted as an ASEAN protocol. We're actually working with um, the four other countries to finalize a memorandum on the non-convention size ships or NCSS to provide a mechanism by which our wooden vessels, which are actually what's being used for barter trading now, to be mainstreamed into our transport network within BIMP IAGA. And it is something that is now gaining recognition and can be adopted later on as an ASEAN protocol. Customs Immigration, Quarantine and Security Harmonization or CIQS was also aggressively pushed within BIMP IAGA because of the peculiarity of our being close to each other. Dahabo is one hour and 15 minutes away from Manado. Tawi-Tawi in Sambuanga are less than about 500 kilometers to um, uh, Saba. Davao is 1,500 kilometers to Manila. So we're very much, Mindanao is very much closer to our neighbors and therefore it makes sense for us to look at doing direct trading and economic interchange on the economic aspect and doing social integration also with um, our neighbors in uh, the Bimpiaga. And across these timelines, uh, the activities, initiatives as put forward in the specific blueprints, blueprints and framework, strategic framework of uh, GMS and IMTGT and Bimpiaga are very much aligned to what's being espoused in ASEAN. These sub-regions do not operate in isolation of what's being envisioned in ASEAN. Rather, the sub-regional cooperation operate in a manner by which it is able to demonstrate forming the building blocks like Lego towards building a big ASEAN building. So any strategy identified with the IAGA are strategies that are being seen at an ASEAN level. So that if we talk about submarine cable connection to connect the power or electricity from Sarawak to, um, um, from Sarawak to Kalimantan and eventually from Saba to Mindanao, that is part of the ASEAN power grid because the landlocked areas of Laos, Vietnam, Cambodia, and Thailand are already trading electricity. The challenge with the Philippines is that it is all the only country in ASEAN that is isolated by ISIS. And therefore, in the case of the Philippines, we need to do a lot of catching up to be able to keep at pace with how our other neighbors in ASEAN are progressing already in terms of integration economically, in terms of infrastructure and logistics. And so all of these initiatives in ASEAN are, of course, guided by specific frameworks. GMS, that's its own 2012 to 2020 um, strategic framework. The IMPGT, or Indonesia Malaysia Thailand Growth Target, has a 2017 2021 blueprint. And BIMP IAGA has a 2017 and 2025 vision. The BIMP IAGA vision 2025, it was just adopted by the four country leaders during its summit in April of this year in Manila, is very much aligned to the ASEAN 2025 vision. And so if you looked at how these sub-regional cooperations, an example of, of the three across many other sub-regions in ASEAN, um, point to similarities and peculiarities, except of course, as I pointed out earlier, when you talked about GMS, it's the entire country of Cambodia, China, Laos, Myanmar, Thailand, Vietnam. Therefore, in terms of scale, in terms of the amount of investments, those are huge. But BIP Yaga and INTGT, these are sub-national, sub-regional cooperation, only involving certain provinces and states, and therefore um, a much, much smaller version of uh, the sub-region like GMS. But in terms of its strategy, the sectors that it is 
putting forward specific activity, um, they adopt the same template. So when you talked about agribusiness, the same template for agribusiness initiatives across the sub-regions. Transport, connectivity, tourism, environment.